Welcome to the next session of Outpace Parkinson's Recovery Program. Now we will be talking about power of the mind. Power of the mind is something which we all have. I would like to explain that positive thinking goes a long way. It's not just make and believe, but the way you think, it makes you work your body and you do actions the way you think. And it really works for the healing of the body, healing of the mind. So what we think, what we believe, it actually affects our biology. This is now called a psychoneuroimmunology, which is a real science and there's a lot of research going on, some breakthrough research going on in this field, which means the way you think, that is the psych part of it. And that affects our brain, our neurology, that affects our endocrine system, that affects our immune functions, and that affects the whole body. So the way you think affects your body. So if you think positive, it has a positive effect on the body. And if you think negative, it can have a negative effect. So there's a close connection between the brain and the body. And uh, there's a nice book written by Bruce Lipton on biology of belief, uh, which conveys this message very clearly. If you want to look more in detail, we as doctors call it a placebo effect when we give a sugar pill and you think it's a tablet which is going to help you and it works. And placebo effect can be as strong as in 50% of people. While there's another effect which is opposite to it, which we call as pointing the bone, which is known as nocebo effect. If you think something will harm you, definitely it will have some bad effect on you. So let's say a doctor gives you a sugar pill and tells you that it causes indigestion, it causes nausea, it can cause muscle cramps, it will cause dizziness. There are chances probably that you might get those side effects even though you are having a sugar pill. So what is more effective, taking that pill or thinking about what that pill will do to you? My suggestion to you is when you have a therapist, a doctor, a neurologist, whoever is treating your Parkinson disease, you should have a good rapport. You should have faith in your healer. And that actually works in your favor. If you are uh, skeptical about what he's treating you, what he's doing with you, then probably even if those things are quite effective, they will not work that well in your system. So I personally believe that you should develop a positive belief system so your body works as you think. You know, uh, Muhammad Ali, who had Parkinson's disease, he had a beautiful quote. He said, what you are thinking about, you are becoming. And that is a lot of power in these words. So start thinking positive. Whatever treatment you think works for you, go on that treatment, embark on that journey, but with positiveness. Now I'll tell you an example in Parkinson's disease which will prove without doubt that Parkinson's has a very strong placebo effect. Uh, there was a surgery done known as fetal transplant double blind sham surgery. It was a controlled trial. What it means is that they were doing fetal transplants, fetal cell transplants in Parkinson's brain to produce dopamine. And they had two groups. One group was having the real stuff. The other group was having a sham surgery. Sham surgery means they were just uh, pretending that they were doing surgeries by making some burr holes in the skull and not doing anything. And double blind means the patient had no clue what they were doing. And the assessors of the patient who were examining these patients after surgery had no clue which one had the true surgery, which one had a sham surgery. So the study revealed that the patients or the participants who thought they had the real surgery, whether they had a sham or they had the real surgery, doesn't matter. But the one who thought they had the real surgery had a very good effect. And the people who thought they might be in the sham surgery group had a bad effect, even in spite of maybe they had a fetal transplant done. So it showed that the Parkinson's patient had a strong placebo effect. And in, not in this study, after that there are various studies done and these all studies have proven without doubt that Parkinson's had a very strong placebo effect. If you think things are working for you, they work for you. 
So I believe that you can use this knowledge to improve your Parkinson's disease and whatever time you invest in an intervention, think that it works for you and it will definitely start working for you. Now the other thing we have already talked about the nocebo effect or pointing the bone, which means negative thinking. If you have negative thinking, it goes negative for you. So try to develop that positive thinking mind. I'll tell you another example in Parkinson's disease about kinesia paradoxa, which means that Parkinson's patients who were almost bedridden, who could not move, when they had some crisis, they could even run. Let's say there is a patient bedridden who has stiff, can't move, and if a fire breaks out, he can even run. This is seen in Parkinson's patients. That means if you are putting all your energy into the attention, into the awareness, you can bypass the basal ganglia circuit and you can do things in a correct way. Because the way we act is through two channels. One is an indirect uh, circuit which goes through basal ganglia and dopamine, while the other one goes direct to the frontal lobes straight with attention, with awareness. And you can use the direct path if you pay attention to a task. Emotional healing is a very, very important concept in Parkinson's disease. Healthy emotions can improve your focus, keep you motivated, and will improve your decision-making ability. With healthy emotions, you can walk, you can take steps rightly, and uh, you can even improve your tremors. You can work in a right way. Even when you have healthy emotions, your body tells you what not to eat, what to eat, and you have that intuitive feeling about things. You are in, in a very safe zone. While unhealthy emotions can affect the brain, can cause loss of focus, can decrease your motivation, can affect your decision-making ability. So having healthy emotions, emotions of love, compassion, warmth, connectedness with people, all this helps us. And the part of healthy emotions, healthy feeling is you also think about the life, what life you are dealing with, what type of life you want to lead, meaning of life, purpose of life. All these things comes to you and everyone has a different purpose and meaning in life. But if you know your own, that gives you a reason to live, that motivates you to improve your condition. And, and that's, that is a very, very important factor to improve your condition. If you, have, you lack motivation, you don't do things, then the disease, as you know, is a neurodegenerative disease and a progressive disease, and it will show decline in your motor symptoms and non-motor symptoms. So positiveness, finding a purpose of life, staying active, all this helps to improve your quality of life. So friends, I would like to say that having a reason to live, a purpose is a crucial element for survival. Search for a deeper meaning and purpose of life. Meditation will help you. And having healthy emotions, connectedness in the world, and looking within can help you a lot. Even writing a journal, sitting in quietude, reflecting on your life, all this will help you to get to that purpose of life. And that is not just for the healing of your disease or improving the motor symptoms or non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. It is much more broader in which Parkinson's disease is, is such a small thing. And that's why I would ask you to meditate. This will help not with Parkinson's disease, but in your general well-being, bringing calmness to the mind. Stay in this awareness. Stay as a witness. You start with the meditative practice and then it becomes your second nature. I would like to read uh, a nice poem on this, which you can look through along with me. The title of the poem is All Places and All Times. If you are truly interested in knowing, beyond even the slightest doubt, a peace that has no conditions or limits. If you are truly interested in knowing a freedom that has absolutely no boundaries at all. If you are truly interested in coming to the end of all seeking, then please consider 
very slowly and carefully. Awareness is everywhere and always. It is always here, it is always now. All places arise in awareness, all times arise in awareness. All feelings arise in awareness, all thoughts arise in awareness. All sights, sounds, smells and tastes arise in awareness. All joys and sorrows arise in awareness. All birth and deaths arise in awareness. Your body arises in awareness and your mind arises in awareness. Emotions, entire life, entire past, entire present, entire future arises in awareness. Everything about yourself arises in awareness and everything about everyone arises in the same awareness. The entire history, current, future of the world arises in the same awareness. Everything in the universe and about the universe arise in awareness. God and everything about God arises in this awareness. All love, affection, kindness, joy, forgiveness, healing and compassion arise in awareness and a perfect expression of this awareness. Understanding and wisdom again arise and are perfect manifestations of the same awareness. All sincerity, truth and honesty qualities of this awareness arise through awareness. All pleasures and pain arise in awareness. Even all desire, fear, anger, sorrow, loneliness, doubt, confusion arise in this awareness. All of what you want and all of what you don't want arise in awareness. All of what you think of yourself as a person arises in this awareness. All of what you think of everybody else in this world also arises in this awareness. All of the things arise and disappear in awareness. Before, during and after all thoughts, all feelings, all sensations, all perceptions, all mental functions and all experiences, what always remains? What is never born and never dies? All theories, philosophies and teachings about consciousness arise and disappear in awareness. All religions and spiritual paths arise and disappear in awareness. Even the word I and even the word awareness arise and disappear in it. After all things, all bodies, minds, thoughts, emotions, sensations, feelings and experience arise and fall, what is eternally here always present. This is what you are, pure awareness. It is neither grandiose nor humble. It is simply the truth. Understand this deeply and the battle is over. Understand this without any reservation and there is no more struggle. You realize this fully and the search has come to an end because you are the end, you are that truth, you are that awareness, you are the peace and joy, you are that love. Thank you.